Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Cube Conversation. I'm John Furrier, your host of the Cube in the Palo Alto studio today. We're discussing cloud computing in the Asia Pacific region. Lots of challenges and opportunities and how the cloud is helping them in AWS. Got a great guest, Cube alumni on before Anna Green, who's the head of SME business of Asia Pacific and Japan for AWS. Anna, great to see you. And thanks for uh, coming in all the way across from, uh, from Asia Pacific. Ah, I'm delighted to be here, John. I love watching the Cube. You guys are always bringing us relevant content across the whole world, especially here in APJ. And congratulations on yourself too. I love the content you're putting out on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and all around the web. You're really taking it direct, sharing the stories. And I love this, the people stories. The International Women's Day, you guys had a fantastic event. Uh, congratulations. And last year we had the big program again. We did it this year. Uh, ne next year we'll definitely have you on for sure. But a lot going on there. First, give us an update. How did the International Women's Day go for you there over there, over there in Asia Pacific? Yeah, look, uh, as usual, a huge uh, amount of activity here at AWS, but really importantly, things that we're trying to do with customers and partners as well to, to sort of amplify the message around our leadership principles, which is we are always striving to be Earth's best employer. Uh, and part of that is about being really intentional about driving a conversation around diversity and inclusion. So a bunch of really cool stuff happening across APJ, all of our countries getting involved. Uh, had some of our, uh, in, in particular, we had an amazing International Women's Day event for our Japan team. Um, you know, what, what we see, John, in IWD is just making sure that uh, we understand that, you know, not every country is at the same place, but we can all be part of a, a similar conversation, which is driving the right outcomes to, to help everyone be successful in a technology career. That's awesome, we miss you. We also missed uh, Tanuja Randery. She was supposed to be on too. So ne next time we'll get, we'll get that together. Um, let's get into the Asia Pacific conversation around the business and the, the, the landscape out there. There are major macroeconomic headwinds for 132 million SMEs and Bs in Asia Pacific region. That's about like 97% of all the enterprise in the region and like 200 million plus people. Could you share uh, more about what's going on there with that, the impact of the economic? Because you know, with challenges comes opportunities. You have the tailwind one day, headwind the other. How do you shift it around? Can you give us some insight into what's going on in the digital transformation out there? Yeah, let's start with framing the, the segment, as you say. So SMEs, 132 million of them here in APJ, 97% of all enterprises. Um, and importantly, 256 million people employed by, uh, by SMEs. So a really massive cohort of people who are thinking differently about doing business. And what we're seeing and hearing from our customers, as you know, we are customer obsessed at AWS. So we're going out there and talking to these customers, what's going on for you? And what we're hearing from them is that SMEs in particular are really vulnerable to the macroeconomic headwinds that are happening. And, and again, John, like it's not rocket science. You think about these customers as they're starting their digital journey, they're going to have smaller cash reserves, they've got weaker supply chain capabilities, and, and obviously they're probably slower in the, the take up of digital tools, although that's not always the case. So what we hear from them is that, look, we're really still interested in what's going on. We've got to cut our costs, but we've kind of also got to be thinking about how we are innovating to grow. So we're seeing a lot of those conversations with our customers. You know, one of the things we're seeing out here in, in the Silicon Valley area and all across North America and around the world is the surge in AI and the, what, um, people are seeing as an opportunity to, to use technology to refactor their business. This has been part of the big story for many, many, for the decade actually in cloud, but now more than ever, smaller businesses that could really have an edge up and do heavy lifting with data. And so I think it's motivating people who are either in the game or want to get in the game to, with technology to know this headroom. So if I'm an SMB or an SME, small medium sized enterprise, I see headroom when I see AI, I see maybe opportunities to change how my workflows are or leverage clouds. Can you talk about how that ties into some of the basic stuff like cost optimization, which is, you know, obviously you, want, you don't, want to, don't want to pay too much. I mean, building on the hyperscale is a benefit, but this is a new opportunity to look at today and have headroom. Yeah, you're absolutely right, John. And really we see a lot of, in particular in regionally, a lot of country businesses leaning into that. I would highlight India as a particular area where we see customers and, and uh, partners helping to innovate for growth. So we've got a really uh, amazing customer who's recently picked up our AWS program by the name of uh, Talk. Um, and they basically are an Indian electric motorcycle and powertrain manufacturer, right? And, and they've started using the Lyft program that we built for uh, SMEs 
uh, to start experimenting. And, and that's what we want to see customers doing more. And what they're doing is experimenting with different use cases like vehicle telemetry and analytics in particular, like you were saying. And what that's going to do for them is to provide greater experiences for their customers um, and build like the electrical vehicle technology of the future that's going to be happening in India. So like uh, to your point, right, we are hearing about things not really happening or maybe a slowdown and cost optimization obviously is key and we'll talk about that more. But really what's going on out there is that these new technologies are being taken up by small and medium enterprises at, at scale. You mentioned AWS Lyft. I was reading about that on the news. I love the name Lyft because I think of an airplane coming off the runway and getting some altitude like a business would want, um, lifting up, doing the heavy lifting. What is the AWS Lyft program that you guys announced? I got the sense it was like a kickstart of a, of a program. It was, a, was it a program, was it a technology? Could you tell us more about what AWS Lyft is? Yeah, look, what we go out, we're customer obsessed. We go out, ask the customers, what do you need? And for us in SME, you know, it's such a massive cohort of customers, but what we keep hearing from those customers is risk. We're worried about the move to the cloud because we're worried about costs. We're worried about experimenting. We're worried about, you know, BAU activities being uh, somehow uh, uh, challenged by migration or by thinking differently about using cloud. So what we did was create AWS Lyft so that we could help our SME customers with that first step to the cloud. And you're right, it's basically a starter pack of cloud credits um, and it, it allows companies over a 12 month period to start digitizing. And what we've done is we've, we've created a really, really low threshold for minimum billing, $1, that's it. And we have no lock-in periods, we have no hidden fees. And what we are trying to do is get SMBs to just feel comfortable to experiment. You know, even one work stream, come and, and join us and like learn about how this technology can help. And we've actually got the program up to $83,500 over 12 months. Now for any small business, that is a material win for them from a cost and expense management perspective. So what we're hearing and seeing is the program's getting, getting legs, it's a real um, like intentional enthusiasm from our customers and <laughs> getting amongst them and using it with our partners, which is really cool. So and actually- <laughs> Go ahead. No, no, I, I, what, what I want to do, because of course, John, I have to be uh, leaning into the conversation about diversity and inclusion while we have the conversation. So for me, uh, we have an amazing partner in Malaysia. I just wanted to highlight the work they're doing. They've actually used Lyft. They're called Exabytes, um, and they specialize in providing web hosting services to SMEs growing in Malaysia. Um, and they've created a digital toolkit uh, in conjunction with Lyft which is going to help women entrepreneurs uh, to, to have free access to digital solutions, workshops, courses, a whole bunch of really great stuff. So we're actually, Lyft is not just helping, uh, you know, any entrepreneurs, we're also like leaning into yeah. how we can help women entrepreneurs build yeah. and grow using these type of programs. And credit funding, as you know, is is the, the way forward with yeah. when you are starting on the cloud. It's, an, it's all zero risk if you got a nice experiment work stream to work with, getting in there, lifting it up there. Any other anecdotes of, uh, in terms of who's signing up for the program? You mentioned Malaysia. Is there any other kind of early adopters jumping into the program? I know it's early days, but is there, is there uh, some anecdotes from customers who have joined and some trends around the makeup of the customers? Yeah, we've got a really cool uh, 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 a customer in the Philippines called the Manila Broadcasting Company. They've started to migrate using the Lyft program and they've managed to uh, experience 35% improvement in overall performance for, for them and 50% increase in access speed for their users. So again, John, like what we're seeing is we know that moving to the cloud saves you money. We just know it. So if you're going to go from on-premises to the cloud, you're on average, you're going to save about 30% in your operating costs. But what we're seeing when, when SMEs in particular start using this technology is that they're actually innovating at speed and at pace as well. And a customer like Manila Broadcasting Company is a really good example of that. Anna, can you share some examples of how some SMEs in Asia region, region have benefited from the cost optimization on EBS and what impact has this had on their business? Yeah, I like to use examples of traditional uh, traditional companies when we're talking about SME because I love your show. We always talk about tech first and the builders out there. But what I like to do is also reference the fact there's a bunch of companies out there who are not tech first 
but they are using technology in really interesting ways. So we've got another customer like Barber in Malaysia, which was founded 40 years ago, uh, and they are a curry powder and spice brand from Malaysia. And they are basically, they, they create and sell products in retail grocery stores across the whole country. Now, what they have done, which is really interesting, is, is use uh, one of our amazing APN partners, Cloud Comrade, um, who uh, is our partner, and they've been able to implement an SAP S4 HANA on AWS solution, which has allowed them to focus on cost optimization and, and DR strategies um, on implementation. And what we found is that that on-demand infrastructure has allowed them to uh, achieve a faster time to value, John, which is for them, traditional company, mm -hmm. reduce the order to cash cycle by 40%. Like that's a huge, if you're running a retail business, that makes such a difference to you. That's just by the use of different technology. So we, we've just, we, we keep seeing examples of how customers are, yes, we're saving money. Now we're going to, in, we're going to innovate. And to conclude this discussion, what advice would you have SMEs and SMBs looking to go to the cloud and the ones also trying to pursue the cost optimization for their organization? Yeah, I, I think what we need to, to accept about SMEs is that they are, wherever they are on their cloud journey, there's an opportunity for them to, to start thinking differently about building their business models. And um, what we found most when we talk to our customers and the partners that support them is that starting with a one-off project is really the right way um, to start thinking about experimenting with the business models. Um, and we're seeing that that is the right approach to, to sort of scale into more of the cloud technology um, that you can use and the, the benefits of that using AWS. Um, and as I said to you, I think really what has become a very apparent to us as we build the segment is that, that these customers are working with our partners. So for us, that AWS competency program that we've built with our partners um, which allows those partners to show demonstrated te technology expertise in specific areas and industry specific services um, is really making a difference to our SMBs because they're figuring out who are the partners that are relevant for me, what my vertical, my, my retail, my manufacturing, my supply chain, like, and we are, we are connecting the dots for those customers, which, and for our partners, which, you know, for us is such a great win. And, and in terms of pursuing cost optimization, you know, there's just, so much opportunity to train your teams. The other thing that we know, John, is that SMEs of all of the, of the, the customers out there are really challenged around digital skills. Um, and you know, here at AWS, we have over 200 free uh, AWS training services online. Uh, and we encourage all of our customers to get amongst it and, and start learning and building that, those digital skills. Well, that's awesome. Congratulations on AWS Lyft. That's a great program. Love the concept, love the names, helping women in business, underrepresented minorities, as well as businesses. As small, medium businesses, they are they have the opportunity these enterprises to be really differentiated with the cloud and AI coming. So, really big deal. Um, I'd like to ask you what's going on in Asia Pacific and Japan. We did do a little experiment with the Cube. SiliconAngle.kr site is up um, in Korea, so we're testing. We had hoped to be out there, but COVID hit, and we were hoping to have a, a Cube team out in your area. Uh, maybe this year we'll start getting back on 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 the uh, the travel. But a lot going on out there. Could you share from your perspective, a lot of folks in the US, North America, and other regions would love to know your travels. I know you travel a lot for your job. I see your endeavors on Facebook and LinkedIn and social media. You're talking to customers, meeting with employees all around the region. What's the vibe? What's it like there? Share uh, your perspective. Uh, I love sharing a perspective of Asia Pacific with my US, US colleagues because <laughs> the opportunity here is just exponential and sometimes you know that kind of get, can get lost in translation but the reality is the macroeconomic indicators are that Asia is the place to be for growth and I will I will tell you that in, in my current role I will also tell you that you know having run I've been the CEO of a bank in Southeast Asia and I can tell you that those fundamentals of growth here remain the same and and so when we talk to our customers we talk to our teams and our partners people here are excited about the opportunity to scale and grow um, our, our teams across Southeast Asia would welcome you uh, to come and, and talk to our customers on the ground who will tell you the same. That, that the, the macroeconomic demographics of this region are that, you know, one in three of our of the people here have more than two mobile phones. Yeah. Um, we have a whole bunch of data and statistics about um, a very young population that's growing. There's a lot of consumer positivity around um, the way in which digital technology is, in, is enabled and consumed here and the opportunity for, for tech businesses uh, and for businesses generally in Southeast Asia and in APJ 
just continues to build and grow. It's an exciting time here. Well, congratulations. We certainly are excited. We want to cover it. We want to know the stories. Dave Vellante and myself and our entire team want the Cube to be global. We'd love to have a Cube region out there soon. Um, we might see you soon, but really appreciate it. We are interested in, again, keep the stories coming. You know, remotes are easy to do. We'd love to check in as much as possible. So Anna, thank you so much for sharing what's going on. Uh, uh, the check-in, really appreciate it. And congratulations on your success and ride that tailwind. Thanks so much, John, take care. Okay, I'm John Furrier here at the Palo Alto Studios. Cloud computing in Asia Pacific is a different kind of business. Small means enterprises dominating, a lot of growth. Thanks for watching.